The first six chapters of Rage are crazy. Let's get into why. Hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss my initial impressions of Rage by Richard Bachman. For those of you who do not know, that is a pen name that Stephen King was writing under for a bit. I'll get into that in my full review, but let's talk about the first six chapters of this book. Rage is a novel that deals with a young man taking a gun to school and doing harm to his teacher and some of his fellow classmates. We are not there in the story, but that is the premise of the book. Where we are in the story is one, we initially opened up with him sitting in his classroom, looking outside, really fixating on this squirrel and the fact that the lawn isn't separated from the school. And so there's no beds of flowers. It's just the window and the line is right there together. That in and of itself introduces us to the interesting psyche of our protagonist. So within the first couple of chapters, we have him in this classroom. We have him observing his teacher and his those other classmates within his classroom and how they're engaging. It seems that the teacher really ignores him because he tries to participate at one point and how she keeps calling on others to solve this question, even though they don't really understand why. Eventually, he is supposed to go to the principal's office and as he does that, he's fixating on other ideas. One thing he's fixating on before he leaves is, and this in and of itself was a little disturbing, was his classmate Sandy and how they went to the dance together and about her underwear and how they were white and clean and what this indicated about her. Listen, I understand that this was written in a different period of time, but it's disturbing. He also uses the F word, again, disturbing, the derogatory term used for someone who is gay. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look up Moonlight. That Mahershala Ali's character Juan gives a perfect definition. And I'm just like, what, what, what am I reading? <laughs> but it gets wilder. And so as he's walking to the principal's office, he's really one thinking of, like he's fantasizing about the teacher chasing him and like attacking him. And that lets us know that in many ways he is paranoid, obsessive, and an unreliable narrator because none of this is happening. But once he gets to the principal's office and we're waiting, we then get him flashing back to, I guess his father and the principal are friends. So when they went to summer camp and it, he talks about big blood having been on his hands and we're not sure if he killed someone or if they went hunting and that's when he had blood on his hands. Because he talks about it not being all his fault and the adults being responsible as well and how they shouldn't fear him because it's really their fault. And if he's going down, they need to go down too. It's like, what is happening? But then he also, we see those initial stages of rage here because he talks about wanting to kill the principal and what that would mean. Listen, he wants to unalive the principal. These first six chapters are like disturbing. I know that it's only going to get worse. And I also am listening to this in audio form. I don't usually prefer audio books, but for this one, I was listening to it. And I think that is also adding to the sensation of what? Cause it's actually really hard to find this book, like in a local library. I wasn't sure if I wanted to like own it for my collection. I'm not really a huge Stephen King fan, though I haven't read a lot of his works. So I'm trying to give him more chances, but a lot of them are available in audio. So I was like, let me listen to this. Y'all, I'm concerned. And I know what the plot and the storyline is. So I know it's only gonna get worse and we have to be in the psyche of this young male, this young adolescent, but I don't know if I was ready. I'm gonna continue to listen. I plan to listen to the entire thing and come back and tell you all more about Richard Bachman and how Stephen King was writing under this pseudonym and why. But as of right now, it, it's just sometimes alarming. You know, I often try to separate the work from the writer, especially in terms of books, especially as someone who is a writer, I think it's kind of invasive or in, inappropriate to always assume that the writer is writing from a place that's true a true experience we are creators we create things act of fiction right that's the act of writing researching or going after creativity in your mind 
but sometimes it's like sheesh like you have to go to like a dark place to write this a little bit um so it's just it's interesting so that's where i am with it i'm gonna finish up i will come back and report more for you all but i just wanted to come on and do this vlog this video letting you all know my initial impressions of this book i think it's gonna be a journey and i don't know if i'm ready but i will report more in the near future that is it for me. As always, I am Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And until the next one, please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the very best day of your life on purpose. Peace. Odabo. Adios. Ciao.